it's one thing to play a small rule set as a solo RPG. It's quite another thing to tackle a big system like something like Starfinder. And this is the first in a series of videos that's going to talk about how I deal with something that is so massive and how I approach it coming to find the story that I'm going to be telling when I'm acting as my solo GM, what works, what doesn't, what is a challenge, and how I handle the types of challenges that are unique to dealing with such heavy rule sets. When thinking about doing something that involves a very big set of rules and and well-established set of rules okay so this isn't so well established when compared to say Pathfinder but it's pretty well established and it certainly is pretty big it the thought process that goes into it is complicated because I can find myself um, getting intimidated pretty easily but also drawn in pretty easily because when something is so well produced and there is so much content, there's a lot to bring you to it. But um, it can be a case of, for me at any rate, as I said, Im intimidation or just not really knowing where to go within this, especially in this case in sci-fi when um, it is so much about creating vast worlds and galaxies and, um, you know, infinite space, um, it, it, you can sort of, or I can find myself not really knowing where to go. Um, in my approach here, my thoughts here, I'm going to just lay them out, and then when you're watching the video, you're going to see whether I actually follow these things or not, because I think one of the things that can happen is um, setting out to do something and then having some idea, and whether or not those ideas come to fruition um, changes. And um, sometimes when that changes along the way, as we take a look here at the extensive credits for Starfinder, um, down the left side here, when that changes, you can, or I can then um, get stuck or abandon perhaps what I was going to do. However, in looking at something this big and in getting something this big, the very first thing that hooked me into it is I find something in the rules often that take a um, basic structure of the rules and in my mind start to generate a story and in the case of here um, what that was came in the starships section and um, it came in the building starship section and within that it was this something at the end of the lengthy rules on building starships it came to this section on choosing your expansion bays and the options for that and it tells us what uh, most starships have room within their hull for one or more expansion bays, each of which can be converted to function in a wide variety of roles. And it was that um, concept, and literally that sentence really now, uh, really rereading it with the word roles in there, that got me thinking, and that got me thinking that this was going to somehow generate the beginning of my story, because when I look here at the one, you could have an arcane laboratory, a cargo hold, an escape pod, guest quarters, a hangar bay, lifeboats, a medical bay, um, a science lab. A smuggler compartment. I mean, this to me is story. This to me is starting to take the rules and generate a story and branch it out. So from that, uh, the other thing, well, I should say from that, I decided on a basic structure of at least of what I think I'm going to want to do here is um, my exploration game. It's going to be a scene-based game, and um, I'm first going to try to build a ship and travel somewhere, and within that, I want to have some ship-to-ship -ship combat somehow, and then, of course, I'm going to explore. I don't know. Um, I think for this, I know that there are extensive rules on... Um, starship combat here that I am most likely thinking I will not be able to follow because they are, um, let's see if I can find them here, they're a lot for me and uh, here we go. 
they will be a lot for me. And um, no, that's the vehicle rolls. Great art here that I've been showing you along the way. Here's some more. This is if you're doing a vehicle chase. Again, really detailed. Um, I know from my I know from my experience with the James Bond RPG chase scenes that um, that can be difficult for me. Now, um, the other thing that struck me was in looking through the book under the races. I love this art. I love this concept of, I don't really know how to pronounce that, Yisoki. Uh, they have cheek pouches. They can store some items in their cheek and they can transfer objects between their hand and their cheek and they can disgorge the contents of their cheek. I just love that. I want to play that. I want that to be part of my story. That has hooked me in, much as when I flipped through it, I saw, and I think I made reference to this in my channel update video where I was talking about the possibility of doing this, um, looking at all these weapons tables and uh, all of the detail here that I know I am not going to use. This is just something I know about myself. I've made reference to this, not reference, I discussed this in my firepower video where I talked about um, the weapons details in that video and for me this is not where my mind goes, my interest goes in terms of getting granular and getting more detailed but certainly as I page through here you can see that this material is quite present in this uh, rule set. So with that in mind, I have this concept of I want to spend some time building a spaceship and talking about how I do that. I want to put some people in my, well, some characters in my spaceship and I want to send it somewhere. I want to do some exploration. My thought process is that I am also going to be bringing in some scaffolding for myself. And what I mean by scaffolding is lighter material that can provide a structure when I, for whatever reason, leave the structure of Starfinder or find that it's too much. And in this case, my thought is I'm going to bring in hulks and heroes for some of the combat rules and possibly some of the exploration generation of where I'm going. I'm also going to be maybe bringing in some things on the exploration from Skyfall, possibly, just because I know that it's there and I haven't used it before, that I might want to demonstrate what that is and just show what that is. And finally, when I get down to it, I think I am going to be using some game components from possibly Starship Troopers, maybe, um, possibly possibly Space Empires 4X, I don't know. These are my thoughts right now. We'll see how that goes. And again, we'll also see whether the overall structure remains. The structure, the idea of it, when I was thinking about it, put me in mind very much of um, uh, Star Trader, Star Traders, I can't remember if it's single, Star Traders, a uh, game that I have and thought I would do a video on at some point, and maybe I still will. But this concept of going shopping for equipment in a starbase, building a starship, and just going out. Now, I may not do trading per se, but something in my mind of the structure of what I think I'm going to do comes from that concept. And so those, this is where I am when I approach it, and we'll see how closely it matches up when I actually get into it. But I know my starting point in all of this massive, massive uh, core rule book here. And of course, there's other other products that um, exist. You can see some of them. Obviously, the Alien Archive exists and um, some of their adventure paths and modules and things like that. But there is just a ton of material in the core rule book. And we can see, you have to make copies of these, a character sheet um, and your um, starship sheet as well. And yet, I want to stick to just this basic 500 plus page rulebook that has plenty of material and show you how I pick and choose and just continue to anchor myself in something that I think I can manage, that I think I can do, and that's going to help me generate a story rather than kind of stymie me with like too much information where I just get stuck. I'm continuing to stick with my concept of building the 
uh, Starship before I even have a party. And the first thing I need to do is calculate the um, APL, the average party level. So I need to know what who's in my party. And that's going to be the uh, levels of all my characters divided by the number of characters with a modifier, plus or minus if my party is small or not. And I'm going to have a party of three. And I've decided I'm going to start them out as level three characters, basically because I want to get 75 build points here. And this may be, you know, again, this may be counterintuitive to playing the game um, as you would if you, not maybe, it would be counterintuitive to playing the game as you would with a GM, but that's not how I'm playing it here. And I will show you or mention, for those of you that are uh, more or less trying to follow along, on page 388 is how you determine your APL, and the table here for my base stats is on 294, and so this is going to give me at um, going to bring me to tier two with 75 build points, and I'm going to be able to expend them building my starship. And it's going to walk you through. I'm not going to do this on video, but um, I already talked about the reasons why I'm starting here. And then um, we'll start with our base frame and we'll just basically walk it through. And I'm rolling up a small light freighter here that's going to have good maneuverability. It'll have three bays and it'll have some basic armor. Its weapon is going to be a laser net that's going to do 2d6 of damage and it will have basic engines and things like that. I'm saving my money for the bays. There are 16 options for passenger bays and I think we'll just go random here and see what, uh, what we'll choose among. So I got, I rolled a 15. I'll just make a note of this somewhere. 15, 7, 14. 7, 14, and 15. All right, let's see what we get here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Medical bay. All right, let me note that down. Medical bay. So 7, 8, 8. Hang on, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, smuggler compartment, and synthesis bay. What is a synthesis bay? Let's see. Check it out. Uh, synthesis bay. Contains all the space and tools required to craft drugs, medicine, or poison. Hmm. So the crafter must still provide the necessary raw materials. A synthesis bay reduce the crafting time by half. Interesting. All right. So I've got a synthesis bay, a smuggler compartment. I'm a freighter. Uh, smuggler compartments are cargo holds, hidden, etc. Ten tons of goods. And what did I get with a medical bay? All right. There we go. This is a small freighter that um, has a smuggler compartment, some synthesis bay to create something, and it has a medical bay, which may help us. So this is now going to be something I'm going to think about, and now I'm going to go back and figure out what three crew members might be on this type of small freighter. Actually, it's called the light freighter. I've taken a little break from filming because I have to admit I got a bit stuck and part of the reason, well, I got stuck rolling up my characters, which is what I had planned on doing next and part of it was because this is a new system to me and I got confused on some of the rules and then I tried to watch someone's video on it and that didn't really help and I also was you know, I had be, been connected in my mind to doing one thing in particular, and uh, that was having a... Here he is, this guy. This guy is what drew me in originally, this a bounty hunter, and I wanted him to be of the... Um, this race here, the Seki race, and passionate and scrappy. In any event, um, I got stuck. So I went online to see if there were pre-generated characters, and indeed there are. There are pre-generated characters. I printed out three of them at level one, and um, one of them is actually a um, Yuseki bounty hunter. It's a mechanic. I wasn't going to make mine a mechanic, but um, I think I'm going to use this as the basis. I don't really want to use a pre-generated character because it 
distances, distances me, of course, from it, but with the complexity of the system and wanting to do three of them, I may use at least one pre-generated character. But so I got stuck there, and then I because when in doubt, um, one of the things I do is go back to backstory. And what I'm turning to here is Beyond the Pack Worlds in page 463 of the Starfinder Core Rulebook. There are. Um, Areas that ha are outside of the uh, the Pact World system, which is this system, that have been explored already, and therefore there's some existing backstory on them, and there are options for, I think there's 14 of them, so we're going to roll our trusty D20 and see what we get. I think we one or all of us will be coming from um, one of these systems and see if I can... Um, um, help myself. Of course, this is not giving me the role that I need. I don't really like to go to, there I got a 13, I don't really like to go to an online app where, you know, obviously I can uh, type in any type of randomization I like. I don't really like to play that way, but you could do that if you didn't want to have to re-roll. But I finally got a 13, which brings us to the Taborai Cluster, a Frontier Nebula. And let us see what it has to say about there. It hosts five known stars, ancient cities dot the river. It's not really giving me countless boom towns and abandoned mining operations. Scrap wave colonies, survivors stranded after interference destroyed their vessel's engines, vie with one another for resources. Okay, so it is a... Um, a world that is in need of something and I'm going to take that and tie it together with the spaceship that I know that we're on again going back to the expansion bays this is what this is what I need to do to um, get myself out of trouble really and trouble in this case is I've got my light freighter here um, trouble in this case is a lack of uh, a lack of direction, a lack of narrative, a lack of pushing myself forward. And this is where I think a lot of times, and I, this, this happens to me too, I will abandon ship, <laughs> as it were. I will just stop playing. And that's okay, but I don't want to do that here. So what I need to do is go back now at everything I've done, looking at what my anchor points were for the narrative, what I just decided would be the origin place for at least one uh, of my party, maybe all of my party, and come back and tell you what I have decided and how that's going to actually move the action into a story. The priest and the envoy were on a diplomatic mission when they traveled through the Tabori cluster and were persuaded by a very charismatic uh, bounty hunter mechanic to have him join their party as they travel along and look out at the expanse and see where they're going to land. I'm at a midpoint here and I am both lost and found. I'm found because I found the name for my bounty hunter mechanic, Flick. Flick is his name and somehow the story is going to revolve around him. Somehow the story always revolved around him and it started with the art that I saw in the Starfinder book, the uh, Yasoki art, but I got lost along the way. He's going to be traveling with a Yashinto priest mystic, and I want to put religion in here. There's religion in Starfinder. It's not something I've really played with before, these big ideas in um, game, but I want that there. And what I need now to know, it's still going back to this concept for my small freighter. I, there's certain things I've let go of and certain things I haven't. Uh, well, first of all, I let go of one character. Right now, we're just going to have two characters in this light freighter, and the key points here are, there are they are smuggling something, and it may have to do with drugs or medicine or poison. Maybe they need to be getting something. I don't know. And this is where I need to turn outside of Starfinder back to my trusty Tome of Adventure Design to see what type of larger mission we can create and see whether that structure is going to get us a little bit unstuck. So the first thing I want to do is 
let's roll up and see what we get. Um, given the physicality of the Smuggler's Bay that we have, I'm going to say that this makes sense to be an item-based mission. So let's roll on this uh, D100 table and see what, uh, what item-based mission we might be getting here. We rolled a 33, and that is coming in as finding or locating what? Finding or locating what? Sorry, it's so dark. It's another early morning play, 90, excuse me, 49. Finding or locating a message or, <laughs> or typo, a message or a letter. Finding or locating a message or a letter. All right, now in the context of, let me just look, note this down. Now I've got a story using material that comes just from the core rulebook. I have realized and discovered that Flick, my bounty hunter mechanic, is an orphan who grew up in an abandoned mining town that had been the site of a rich ore generating industry. But decades after the planet was stripped of its resources, he was born with an unusual knack for fixing things and understanding how to bring industry back to his world. He discovered component parts to a machine that could convert the planet's now useless rocks and soil back into uh, usable ore that could be sold and traded to bring the planet back into the galactic economy. He met up with this Lashunta priest mystic from a uh, Al Abalon that is a mechanical world that's primarily filled with non-biological life. It is a home where non-biological entities can receive justice through the courts and be tried in a fair way. And as such, it is a haven for androids and many other non-biological creatures. It's also the site of the Church of Triune, but our Lashunta priest actually worships the Lady of Wisdom, Eurisa. And her uh, belief is that the simple act of reading can be an act of homage, that learning and insight and verifiable uh, scientific knowledge is the uh, way in which you can best understand the universe. Her temples resemble ancient libraries filled with books, even if what is in them is just a holographic creation. And so it is quite clear that the priest is going to help our bounty hunter search for the missing formula that is no doubt hidden within the confines of some library or temple on the world from which the priest has come.